pain is a very slippery, a very abstract, a very subjective um, concept. And you can look at it from a number of different positions. You can look at it from the point of view of clinicians, of doctors, of physicians. You can look at it from a philosophical or scientific or sociological um, point of view. And all of these points of view have very, very different definitions of what they are actually studying. As an historian, I've always actually been quite a lone scholar, but when I started to approach this massive topic about pain, it became very obvious um, that actually collaborative work is really very important. And this was why I decided for the pain project to actually make it into a much more collaborative project with other historians primarily, but also we have visiting fellows um, who come from different disciplines to enable us to actually engage with different ways of understanding pain. Please, please, not the one a dog would be put down for. And let it not be the one which is chronic, nor the one which is acute. Let it not be the one to demand its own journal, not the one between seven or ten or at ninety percent. Not the one I can point to with my finger, and even more, not the one I can't point to. I think the body in pain is a very difficult thing for contemporary society. Um, I think our expectations of how our lives should be are, have become very remote from how they are in many, many ways. And I think pain is one of them. There's an expectation that we shall not feel pain. It makes it complex, it makes it hard to talk about, to find a language that people are ready to accept and think about. And yet, there are people in pain everywhere we look, actually quite isolated, even within their families, because it still is a powerful taboo. I think because our expectation is that we will be healthy and happy, that that's what we deserve, that's what we must have as 21st century beings. The thing about this piece is, is that it's not directly expressing pain in, that, in, this, in this way. What it is is exploring ideas surrounding attitudes to pain and treatments of pain. Ultimately what it is is my response to the ideas presented by the pain project, this cultural history of pain which is such an enormous subject that I thought I would reduce to this microcosm of, a, of Miss Sinclair going to visit Mr. Clark in this rather sort of absurd, timeless kind of environment, the kind of pivot in ideas from the 19th to the 20th century, as well as kind of examining the sort of difficult layers of miscommunication that can go on between a doctor and a patient. Because I'm a photographer and, and then I've been working with film, I've thought a lot about how we look at each other and how we are looked at, and that there seem to be parallels between the processes of photographic portraiture, which are to do with, with looking, and you could see it as voyeuristic, you could see it as objectifying, and medicine how do you not objectify someone else's pain when you're talking about pain within a pain consultation? This pain or this narrative is to some extent being constructed at that moment and you feel very strongly it needs to come into being in a very shared way. Pain is if you like, an event. It is a kind of an event. It's a kind of being in the world. So by looking at pain as a kind of being in the world, we can actually ask, what is this thing that these people are suffering? And how can we actually historicize it? How do those different beings come into place? How do you create a society where one thing is called painful and another thing is called a different kind of sensation for example. So it enables you to interrogate all those different definitions of pain and work out a theory of what is pain, what are the changes that we are observing. <laughs>